Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Alexander. I'm a library associate here at Snow Isle Libraries. Thank you for joining us for this evening's program, Japanese Quick Pickling, presented by Nancy Singleton Hachisu. Before we get started, I have a few pieces of housekeeping information to share. First of all, your cameras and microphones are turned off and will remain so throughout the program. Please put your questions and comments into the chat window. Only the program hosts will be able to see your messages in the chat. From the chat, uh, we'll gather questions, respond to as many of them as we can in the moment, um, and address any lingering uh, at the end of the program. We will also use the chat to share out links and information with you. Second of all, closed captioning is available for this presentation. It can be enabled by clicking the CC button at the bottom of your Zoom window. And last, this event is being recorded and will be available on the Snow Isle Library's YouTube channel. At this point, I would like to introduce Nancy. Nancy has uh, lived in the Japanese countryside for over three decades, practicing traditional cultivation and food preparation, and is the author of five Japanese cookbooks, most recently, Japan, the Vegetarian Cookbook. Thank you, Nancy, for joining us. I will turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> as the title says, we are going to make some quick, pickled, quick pickles. Um, in general, Japanese pickles, there's two types, the quick pickles, and then uh, the skimolo, and then hozonjoku, which is more of a fermented pickle. Um, they are not similar to uh, Western pickles in that typically we don't use uh, vinegar for pickling, but today we will include some vinegar for what we would call sunomono. That means vinegar things, and also, uh, Cool little pickle called called Joby Joby side. Um, always on hand carrots. Okay, so first we're going to start with the cinnamon, the uh, pickled mountain yam. This is a mountain yam. I know it's hard to find. Um, <clears throat> you could probably uh, substitute turnip. I would say. All right. So it's a kind of a. Um, you're going to peel it. It's a. It's a tuber that is very sticky and it also is very itchy so when you work with it you some people wear gloves i'm not a glovey glovey type person um so you wash your it's very slippery wash your hands immediately afterwards it's you can also use a paper towel if you want um i had andrew start andrew my son is my assistant today and he helped do some prep so that we can get done on time. And let's get that paper towel because those peels are kind of crazy. All right, so um, I've pre we, the royal we, have pre-prepped a few of these vegetables so that we can get this done quicker. And I need to wash my hands. <laughs> Sorry. And sliminess, or what we say in the book, stickiness, to be nicer, uh, is a is a desired or a loved trait or quality in food in Japan. So not to be perhaps will not know that stickiness. All right, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it down the middle and then cut it into like thick, thick uh, half rounds. And um, you wanna use a Japanese knife if possible. This is my new knife, it's a very bonsai. Um, the daily knife that we've been using all of these years is this one here. Um, they're both excellent. The point is they're super light and they have a razor sharp blade. And that is essential for cutting Japanese vegetables. Okay, so we're soaking these to avoid discoloration, right? Okay, now this 
board is sticky. So we're gonna do a little trick and turn it over. No, it's all clean. All right. <clears throat> now, yikes. And then we, oops, there's flying around now. Um, the other thing I've done here, just to save time, is I've um, soaked these, and you can even have dry shiitake from, it's on the, on top of the plastic, on top of those bottles, see? Just one second. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> these are thick capped called donko. Um there's these are sun dried. Uh, what are they soaking in? Oh, okay. So it's soaking in hot water. This is what we're looking for. These kind of things. This one's not good. Like that. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. And is mountain yen nagaimo? Nagaimo? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> these have been soaked for 20 minutes plus. And we're going to take the, we're saving the soaking liquid. It's often this, the basis for a lot of this cooking is um, temple food. So we, that stem is not going to be used today. Often it is. Um, the soaking liquid will be used. We're gonna cut it into thin slices, okay? And then add it to my cute little dance pot that Andrew gave me, along with the other one, we have two. Um, I added a little bit extra liquid, so that's fine. Okay, <clears throat> and then to that, we're going to add a tablespoon each of shoyu, soy sauce. Um, and miru, miran, okay. They want to know what, um, you're soaking the nugget in. Water, cold water, to avoid discoloration. Yeah. yeah. So this, if we feel like the shiitake, the dried shiitake is still a little bit hard, we could simmer it a little bit, like um, for a few minutes to soften. I. And they're asking um, mm -hmm. if you have to use dry shiitake or not. Uh, yes, dry shiitake. Yes, dry shiitake and fresh shiitake have two different flavor profiles. Dry shiitake are used often in this kind of application. Um, they also dry shiitake have um, because of the sun drying. If they're sun dried shiitake, they have uh, a lot of, uh, they're rich in vitamin D, so very um, good and good for you. Um, <clears throat> I just did a program with NHK on that. Um, and I, my recipe says five minutes, but I feel like I don't want to do more than this today. I want to have some more chewiness. So, we're going to cool it down here like that and put this over here because I think it's done. And <clears throat> while this is cooling, we're going to get this out magically. And, and it didn't shut the door on the closet. The kitty's gonna go in there. Okay, so what I've got in this bowl I um before I'm dropping my towel. Um in this bowl I have um preheated the dressing for this sunomono uh vinegar thing. Um Japanese didn't really have salads, and so this would take the place of salad for um Japanese cooking. And this a standard um ratio for making this sweet vinegar, um, amasu, would be either, whoopsie, one to one or two to one. Okay, today it's two to one because I don't like it too sweet. 
And this is Io Jozo, best vinegar in Japan, arguably. Mikawa Mirin, same, best mirin in Japan. So I've got six tablespoons of vinegar, six tablespoons. This vinegar has been fermented from um, sake, so it's the real deal. Um, six tablespoons of mirin, that's been also fermented from rice. And then I have a half tablespoon of salt. Okay, then, and I, I cooled it down just for the, the, the sake of time. These mountain yams, they were just holding in the cold water. That's the whole point was just so they don't get, get discolored. Um, if you have, and you see that viscosity coming out there. Um, <clears throat> oh, look at that. Yeah, okay. So, because water and, um, I'm gonna go back to the viscosity side. Because water and vinegar, slash oil don't really mix. I am a big proponent of drying things off. <clears throat> so, oops, a little bit of carrot. So I'm drying this mountain yam off. Okay. So the mountain yam adds crunch and also has this really cool, um, crunchiness, but again, if you don't have it, oh, we don't want to hit it too hard. It's going to get broken. All right, so um, I'm going to put it in this bowl. Okay, this towel needs to be washed because now it's got the viscosity on it. <clears throat> and so this cool bowl made by my Potter friend Kimura san. And this vinegar, two parts vinegar, one part medium with a little salt that's been heated up to melt the salt and take off a little bit of the alcohol and vinegar. I'm out of the, the mirin. Okay, I'm gonna put it in here. And now in the best of oops, it's not gonna fit. In the best of all worlds, we're going to be waiting this for an hour, but we don't have an hour to wait it for. So we're just gonna wait it as long as we can, put it off camera. <clears throat> then, next is, um, cucumber. So, um, this is Japanese cucumber. Uh, If you don't have Japanese cucumbers, the point of Japanese cucumbers is the skin is soft um, and we eat the skin. If you don't, then you should ribbon cut off part of the skin, uh, get the thinnest cucumbers you can. Persian cucumbers um, are ones that we've used in the past for, for various, um, and <clears throat> I've already um, washed these. And then you're gonna cut them into sort of like five millimeter, um, I guess you call that a quarter inch in America. Um, and we've already pre-cut the other part of the cucumber, we as an Andrew, okay? Um, so that's that. Then Andrew has done a huge, lovely job on the julienning. We'll see if I can do that as well. Um, and, oh, Andrew's my son, by the way. And he did the, um, all the plate, all the preparation and plating for the Japanese vegetarian book. And I did all the, brought all the ceramics. Okay, so the key is to get it very fine, which is why you want the Japanese knife. I'm sure he just got his method and I've got my method. And, I'm sure his is better probably, you know, what can you say? Um, I think it's in the DNA, or maybe it's just the skill. Um, impatient Americans. Okay. All right, so, now um, one, these, we're bringing up some techniques. 
um, in this recipe, and that's one of the reasons why I chose it. Um, technique of seasoning the shiitake, the dried shiitake, uh, with sweet and meeting and soy sauce, one to one, to give it that. That will be so. There's unseasoned and then seasoned. So that's a really important point. And then these cucumbers and carrots will be salted very lightly for 10 minutes. That's a slam dunk, very common method. Um, and some people are going to really massage them in. Um, I tend to massage very lightly and um, that's just me. <clears throat> okay, so, um, it's a little bit, that's 75 grams of each of these, whatever that is in ounces, I don't know. Um, it's in the book. Okay, so in the recipe, it says to, see my carrots are sticking together. Uh, in the recipe, it says to wash these off. Um, just for the interest of Whatever, I'm not gonna wash them, I'm gonna lop them off. Okay, those are sitting for 10 minutes. Um, we're gonna speed up the, speed up the, um, um, speed up the 10 minutes. <laughs> Probably leave a little salt on it. The shiitake we're going to drain. I'm sort of, you know, going to work speed on these things and not following the exact timing because um, it's better to see the progression all the way through. Okay, so we've got these pre-salted and sticking together carrots. We've got the mountain yam that's in the dressing. And then <clears throat> we're going to put it all together. Um, let's just wait one second. We'll do some prep on that carrot and that will give us a little bit more um you kind of keep track of like 10 minutes on this okay once this is 10 minutes up i think we can move along all right so this is called um ramigiri um means a, like a random cut it's sort of a i'll show you it's a very typical type of cut um these are carrots from our friend uh, so that's on best farmers and who's been Oopsie. Excuse me. Better wash that. Okay. Um, and I've been apprenticing with them. And okay, so did you cut this in half, the top part, or not? Or put it somewhere to I'm gonna cut up a little bit more and can you see? It's a random cut. Okay, this, because the carrot's so precious, we don't want to take off too much. These are the best carrots in the world. Okay, and my cuts are a little bit smaller than Andrew's. That's okay. All right, this is another Kimono Sun Bowl. All right, so now, you really want to be washing your knife at every turn because it's, um, you know, uh, uh, iron, um, but we're using a knife wiper. Okay, now the carrot, how long for 10 minutes? Carrot, um, the, um, 10 minutes on the end. Um, 8.30. Huh? 8.30. What does that mean? Oh, I see. Okay, let's just get up prepped up for the um sorry, I'm just okay, let me just get prepped up. These are little chilies. Um finish prepping up this and then we can finish that dish. These are little chilies um that we grow the chile japones. Japonesa? Japones. Um my husband grows these and his father. <clears throat> so um a lot of pickling dishes in Japan use chile. 
dried. Um, typically, oh, <laughs> it's very strong. Um, okay. Sorry. Okay. They're typically um, um, cut into fine rings. All right, <clears throat> we'll put this aside. Okay, and we'll finish with this dish. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave any salt crystals in the bottom. That's my trick. And um, okay, fold up and take this off. Okay, we're going to finish the whoopsie. We're going to finish the mountain yam dish. This is, by the way, a clean towel, not, not a used towel. Got it out this morning. Um, all right. So these, these dishes, these little pickling dishes or vinegar dishes, they're eaten at any meal, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, so they're sort of like the, the backbone of, of Japanese um, cuisine. And they appear in high level cooking down to the lowest level. But obviously the better, better made ones are going to be at a little bit higher level mostly so farmers do a good job. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're going to put it all together. It's really simple. Um, mostly we're just talking about knife work. So lots of knife work. That's why having a good, and it's not an expensive knife, a good sharp Plain knife is really important. Okay, so we got the mountain hand that's been waited for not really an hour, but we'll call it an hour. Okay, and so here it is in the, um, I was gonna put in a different dish. So I thought it would be pretty in this, but I suppose it could be going in there. All right, this goes in together. There's a couple ways to plate this. Um, in the original recipe, we had it uh, we had it um, in separate pieces, like a composed salad. And then when we did the photo shoot, Andrew plated it together, and it was really nice. And so um, it was pretty. So I'm gonna do it that way. Um, it's, uh... Salt for the carrot and cucumber for flavor or getting the liquids out? For getting the liquids out. Yes, thank you. Uh, a little bit of flavor, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the Western implements for tossing because it's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, full. So let's see if we can get what happens when we put it in here. Okay. I think it's a little easier to handle. Yeah, that technique is for getting the liquids out. And also, it's not, I'm not going to say cooking it, but it does fatigue it a little bit. So it's off raw. That's another point. Okay. Okay. Okay, Andrew's the master plater. Andrew, does this pass muster for plating? Can you see it? Uh, get the huh? little thingy that's pointing out. A little thingy that's pointing out. Mmm, delicious. No. Perfect. 
Can you see? No. Can you position it on camera? Okay. We'll clean up the space. Okay, that's the first one. The other ones are that's the most time time consuming one. So hopefully we will be okay otherwise. <clears throat> All right. Then next. This was the soaking liquid. We have one. Yeah, if I got the big storm of dishes over there. Okay. Next is the carrot. This is probably the most sorry, I need to water. The most like a Western type of pickle. Um this one, I'm gonna say we should eat it in the next few days. That's best the first day, second. Lots of Japanese like it the second day or third day. Um, it's it's a taste thing. Okay, so the carrot one, usually we're going to um, heat up some very lovely um, watermelon sesame oil. You can get all of the stuff at the Japanese, uh, except for the meeting, at the Japanese pantry guys, my pals. Um, Okay, just a little bit of oil, just a little bit. And we're using this burner. So I'm gonna move it over a little bit on medium. And we're just gonna get a little bit of, I'm gonna put this over here, a little bit of um, color caramelization. That is on the carrots. The fact that um, they are slightly heated <clears throat> and not cooked, cooked per se, but they're you know um, they're not raw. They've been they're they're going to be like I said caramelized, um, and that is what helps with their preservation. So they're going to be put in this jar, which I don't think is gonna fit. Um, do we have any other jars? I don't own jars anymore. I moved to this house. Hmm? Oh, 10 minutes. Hmm? 10 minutes. I don't know. Oh, 10 minutes? We're already done. So, um, and this is an Oigan pan, um, non -batiki. It's a really great cast iron pan that is actually a sukiyaki pan. But I use it in the frying pan. It has this super cool um, lid. <clears throat> um, and do you see if there's any other jar hanging around? And here's the jar guy. This is his jar. Um, okay, so this is about three minutes, depending on your pan, depending on your heat. And we're just looking for some carbonization. Don't don't keep stirring it like I do. Hmm? Oh, can I see? Oh, it's bigger, right? That's bigger. Okay, I think that's bigger. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's bigger. Okay. Um, we got a whole jar collection that I didn't even know about. Okay, so. Okay. I'm gonna get the heat up a little bit. All right. So um in here is going to be gonna concentrate on this. Getting a little color. Yeah, I think it's getting there. Yeah, okay. Um, you might want to separate these into two jars. Maybe that makes sense. Okay. 
So because of the heat, I'm really only supposed to um, fill these up 75%. So, oh. Okay. And this is the perfect photo, in fact. I drop things all the time. I got a bee sting this morning. Yeah. Just way of life. Actually, it was a wasp. And it took the stinger out for me. We have a stinger remover kit. Okay, so this is all done. Done and done and done. Put those out of the way. Okay. All right, so in here, this is 75% full, perfect. We're gonna put 100 mils. Just look for the, if you don't use the mill thing, look for it elsewhere. Okay, 100 mils of this incredible rice vinegar. Okay. And 80, so it's a fairly sweet, um, and just making sounds, making signs like not exactly sure about the time. So I just checked the clock myself. Um, this is 80 mil. So it's a little bit of the sweet side of the mirror in. And then um, Chile. Okay. Uh, quarter teaspoon salt. And I'm going to just add a little hint of soy sauce, one teaspoon. Again, um, the better your condiments, these are all fermented condiments, the better your condiments, except for the oil, of course, um, the better your condiments, the better your, and the better your vegetable, the better your result, because they've done all the work. And then... The farmer's done all the work and you just just did a little bit and there you go. Okay, so that is done. You can eat it soon or eat it um, up to like two weeks in the fridge. Okay. All right. What's the brand of rice vinegar that you can use? I use Io Jozo. Japanese pantry has it. Mikawa Mirin. Um, is found at Natural Import Company. Um, also, um, they repackage through other companies like um, ClearSpring. I've seen it on Amazon, repackaged by ClearSpring. For sure, it's more expensive, but it's the real deal. It's actually fermented from glutinous rice, and there's a whole process of in his koji. It's made similar to the way they make sake, but not exactly like sake. Um, it's allowed to sacrifice. Um, get sweetened and so it's naturally sweet there's no added sugar it's all rice and koji and then there's also a step Mikawa meeting also does a step where they um, they make a shochu which is a distilled portion um, they have it on their website it's actually incredibly and it's English incredibly interesting um, the shochu uh, that they have a blue uh, Io Jozo the sun went to graduate school to learn how to make an even, his father said, this is this company is pretty amazing. The grandfather went around to the local farmers, rice farmers and asked them, and it's in really, really like rural outside of Kyoto a couple hours, asked them to grow organically for him. This is like 50 years ago, unheard of. This farmer, our friends, they've been doing it for 60 years, unheard of. I mean, the amount of organics in Japan is 0.03%, so very low. Anyway, so the local farmers were convinced by the grandpa's like a miracle. And then <clears throat> the father comes along and the father's making the vinegar and his customers are saying to him, oh, you know, Iyo-san, we like your vinegar, but it, it smells too much like rice. Like, oh, well, that's kind of funny because it's made from rice. Um, other vinegars have very little rice in them. I won't say the names. Then, the, so the oldest son, who's now, I think he's the current president, he, um, Aki, uh, he, uh, for, for Aki Yoshi, Aki, you know, sorry, Iyosom, he went to graduate school to learn how to make an even 
more rice, but less rice forward flavor, uh, smell. Um, and that's the blue label. They're, they're both amazing. And then this is our local soy sauce, um, Yamaki. And they are available in the Japanese pantry too. And, and um, Osawa Japan repackages them under the label of Nama Shoyu. That's found uh, in a lot of places. Okay, moving along. That is done, but <clears throat> um, we can, if I'm gonna plate this up, um, I might put it in this really cool black bowl. I guess Andrew's gonna tell me it's too much for this bowl, but anyway, I already did it. Um, <clears throat> so we'll leave it plated so that, or bold, whichever the case may be so that you can see it and it's really pretty. You wanna think about your bowls and the colors. Um, and again, it's probably a little bit too much for, for, um, for Japanese aesthetics, but we already did it, it's done. Okay, next is the broccoli is what we're gonna do next. Um, no, we're gonna do this first. We're gonna do this first. <clears throat> this is, because there's a 10 minute salt. All right, this, Andrew's done um, part one and a half. This is one and a half daikon, thin daikon. You're obviously gonna use a daikon for another um, uh, dish. You're typically gonna make this when you have a daikon dish that you're already making, and then you wanna use the peels because it's wasteful. So you peel it. My eyes are not as good as Andrew's the lighting. You peel it and then it's easier in this application to do it with a peeler. <laughs> Actually. Okay. Um, can you see? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna stack them. That's what I, how I do it. Um, so, like I said, I mean, I do dinners in the states, and um, it's all the knife work is what the whole thing is. And so, um, it's just a lot of knife work. These are a little bit long. Um, let me put them in there. Um, oops. We want them in chopstickable, chopstickable pieces. Um, there's no, you know, you just, it's as, it's as you feel. Could be Julian. I like the strips a little bit. Um, that's okay. All right. I think pretty much we've been doing it this uh, um, lengthwise half of the peel. Um, cut this way. <clears throat> okay, so this gets a light salt. This is like 60 grams, maybe it's 50. Just a light salt. Again, it's a light salt. One of my friends um, famously <laughs> was salting the cucumbers and then it was more and more and more salt. Let's not do that. Okay, so those will hold for 10 minutes and we're going to show you now, this again is the concept of using um, using using the parts that normally. I mean, in Japan, we do use the stems quite a bit for pickling or for for eating. Um, typically, I'm going to use my other knife, the Western style knife. Typically, okay. This we'll use for some other dish. Um, and again, normally it would be starting with the florets. And then, oh, by the way, you have the stems and so that you're gonna, you can make a soup or you can make um, a pickle. This is actually a genius pickle. All right. And I will talk about the miso in a second. Let me move this out of the camera. <clears throat> 
There we go. All right. So um, why did I switch to this name? This knife has a very soft, soft yet hard. It's a very um, sharp, uh, very thin blade. And so it's easy to chip. So we don't, I mean, I'm sure broccoli is probably fine, but just in case, because it's actually kind of hard. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to take off the bottom part that where it was cut. And then um, you're going to take off some of the sides. And in a lot of Japanese cooking, you're going to peel it. Um, I like the shape of the broccoli like that for the pickle. Um, so I don't want to take up too much. And you're pickling it anyway. Woo! I guess I just took off too much. Um, okay. All right, so we have these. And uh, these stems, drop the cuttings. <clears throat> okay, the next method is miso pickling. Um, I did it the other day with uh, a, a, a boiled egg, like a nine minute egg. Um, and did it for four hours. In this case, we're going to pickle these overnight um, in the miso so that it can take on the miso flavor. Um, okay, always clean up as you go, because it's a big mess. Okay, so <clears throat> these are the stems. A little bit funny shapes because I kind of screwed that one up. We won't, we won't say anything about that. Um, all right. This is mame miso, soybean miso from Yamaki. This is available through Muso, various places, Rainbow Grocery, I think sometimes I in San Francisco. <clears throat> it's a little bit harder to get miso, but the soybean miso means that. Okay, in Japan, in America, you have all these odd um, non-Japanese style misos. In Japan, miso is made from soybeans, steamed soybeans. Lots of steamed soybeans. Then the koji, the fermentation spore, is propagated on either white rice, brown rice, but it's not like brown brown rice, it's slightly polished, okay? Barley or soybeans. Those, those grains and that pulse have been steamed then <clears throat> separately from the couple, the big soybean group. And then the spores are propagated on the cool to body temperature rice, barley, or soybeans. <clears throat> the reason why this is so dark is because it only has soybeans in it similar to what tamari um, is only soybeans and there's no wheat in it. Um, so it's also wheat, wheat and that's why it's so dark. So it's really good for, you know, hearty soups or really good for pickling broccoli stems. So <clears throat> this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put the, the miso around the, broccoli stem. Um, if you're a glovey person, you could put gloves on. Um, and you want, to, so you can reuse this miso. The trick is you want to get a covering without like wasting lots and lots of miso. It's a bit of a trick. Okay, so, but we're going to try hard. And then you can reuse this miso, this pickling miso. I did some yesterday, so we're going to do the magic trick of um, getting the bro broccoli out because it's been pickling for one day. <clears throat> you can reuse this miso um, for one, one more time for pickling, just once, because it leaches out, it loses its salt and gets the vegetable gets um, vegetable leaps into it because it's salt. Um, 
because that's what salt does. It dries up, draws out moisture. <clears throat> um, and probably because we're um, on camera, I'm probably um, using more miso than in the sake of time. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I have in the past put it in Ziplocs. Yesterday I decided the Ziploc was going to be more trouble. And um, so I put it on a dish and put a little plastic. I know plastic is not, there's issues with plastic, but um, uh, sometimes it's a necessary evil because they smell, you can't, you don't want to get the smells in the refrigerator. Okay, so it uses a lot more miso than you would imagine. That's why in the method I had the Ziploc bag because you can sort of fudge it a little bit. You can not completely cover it like this. Um, and it, it can be like touching and that miso is, is, is kissing on to the next next door neighbor stem. Um, so, um, and this is getting to be quite the mess. Um, and in the interest of time, I might just call it a day because we haven't done ones. But I was gonna, okay, we won't. We'll be, okay. A little bit more and then we're done. <clears throat> All right, so then on the plate, you can sort of budge it up. Okay, um, and harvest this from your hands. Okay. Um, and now, the next thing is, so it's cleaning it up. I cut my miso open in the back. All right, then, this is the done one. It's been, in the, been on the miso for um, uh, a day from yesterday afternoon, actually, so not quite 24 hours. Wait, here. All right, this is, um, oh no, it's for the next dish. All right, so I will remove the miso. You can see there's some liquid that came up. That's from the broccoli stem. So I'm gonna harvest this miso off. You can also use it in um, a broccoli, a, a miso soup that has broccoli in it. I wouldn't use it for a broccoli and some tofu, little chopped um, chopped scallions, that would be good. Um, curry rice is very forgiving. Whoopsie, on my sock. Curry rice is very forgiving for um, some sort of, a because it's a very hearty dish, mabo tofu. Um, I have a really good um, vegetarian versions in the vegetarian cookbook. All right, you can leave a little bit of the miso cleaning. I think it's nice. Um, and, um, but because of this um, leaching out of the vegetable juices and from the salt in the miso, <clears throat> oh, uh, yes, of course, miso has salt in it. I forgot that point um and the salt salt is necessary for fermentation because um for fermentations such as soy sauce and miso it and some vegetable fermentations because <clears throat> it keeps the fermentation it keeps the vegetable from uh putrefying from going bad um so it's the dance between the salt and the fermentation action. Um, it sort of keeps things at bay. All right, then this is done. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so I need another drink of water. Okay. So then, um, the using this um, soybean miso, it. Um, gets you a darker cure. You can use any kind of miso, but white miso, because white miso is not in the same spectrum. Let me just taste this. Mm, good. Um, you can taste the miso on the outside. I would not do it more, but I think it's a more than one day. Um, you can just take the miso off. And then, um, then um, hold it in the refrigerator uncut is what I would do. Um, Andrew's the the master plater, but uh, this doesn't look good. I need my chopsticks. Um, oops. Okay. Um, so with miso, I like to add a little seven spice powder um, and a better one is always better. This has base of a red chili and some sesame seeds. This is made by the sesame people, uh, mixed up by the sesame people with only Japanese, um, with only Japanese ingredients. Most of them are made from um, another country's ingredients, which I will not name. Um, some green nori um, and hemp seeds sometimes, yuzu, uh, about seven spices at least. Okay, so that is your little pickle, okay, with the seven spice on it. All right, and then the last thing, let me wash my hands from the seven spice. Okay, did you have 10 minutes in this, on the deck room? Did you do it? <laughs> and you didn't have it for 10 minutes. Okay, that's fine. We'll use a paper towel for this one. Um, okay, this is, again, in this case, Daiko doesn't really have a lot of water, but you know, it did have some. Um, cucumber is the one that has most. Um, in this, uh, yeah, you know, there's, can you see the shininess? Can you see it? It's fairly it is wet. Um, okay, so I'm going to pat it down. You can use a clean towel. I just ran out of clean towels with this juncture. Okay, so we want to get the moisture off. We're going to put it in this little bowl. And clean. Okay, now. The trick here is not to use too much and like a quarter teaspoon or so. It's almost too much, huh? All right, less is more for Japanese cooking, especially this kind of thing. Ume is a great uh, sour plum, which is actually, which is ume is, maybe you've seen ume boshi, those, uh, pickled sour plums. They're, you know, in the apricot family rather than plum family, but some in the 60s, all of these translations came up a little bit strangely. We, this actually is aka miso, um, not brown rice miso or barley miso, which a lot of people think. The dark miso, this black miso is uh, red miso. Sorry, forgot the English translation. Um, but things got all mixed up. We call it soybean miso barley miso, brown rice miso. Um, 
or there's also white miso, which is a different spectrum. <clears throat> okay, then, so this, sadly, this farmer has given up. He supply, he made um, umeboshi and this ume paste, uh, uh, so-called sour plum, um, oh, and this really cool shiso powder. Um, shiso powder, he makes, made, he stopped making, um, trying to get Andrew to do it. Um, he takes the, takes red shiso, which he grows. He also grows all of the, the ume slash sour plum. And he, um, he takes the red shiso leaves that he has grown and he, um, dips them in the ume brine, the, the sour plum brine. They're, they're, they're um, staying in brine until he sun dries them. Then he dips it in, sun dries the leaves, dips it in, sun dries leaves three times. And that develops this incredible flavor. And the things that use ume is sour plum. Let's just give it a taste. Okay, I think it's good. It's hard to distribute. Me too. Um, the trick is to distribute. Also, the trick is you're only giving a little bit. So I don't think I have any plain. Okay, we'll do it from these. So I like to use a little bit of a little bit of the um Andrew is just gonna pass muster. Andrew the, the master plater. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I like with ume, I like a little bit of shiso powder. We do a technique, I mean, a little bit. We do a technique called patisio. That means um, standing salt. Um, you're 30 centimeters, so like a foot above, and it gives you, uh, for salting, for anything you're sprinkling on, and it gives you a, 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 more, a wider distribution rather than like that. Okay, those are there, that, and that is that. Okay, so that is the, let me put these together. Um, this is your lineup, get these chopsticks out, okay. And do this, 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 and this. This is what we made today. Um, okay, and these should be eaten fairly soon. Um, this one is the one that stays, it's gonna go back in the jar, it stays the longest. These, and it's the most like a, a Western pickle. Um, and then um, these are quick pickles, which would go for one to maximum three days. So did anybody have any questions? Thank you very much, Nancy. Yeah, I think uh, at this point, um, if anyone else has any further questions, I know you've been doing a great job of responding. Um, over the course of the program as folks have things to say. But indeed, if anyone in attendance has any uh, final questions, feel free to add them into the chat now. Um, while you are taking a moment to type in those questions, um, I will uh, again reiterate that we will be sending out uh, the detailed recipes for uh, everything that Nancy made today. Um, we'll send those out by email to everyone who registered. Um, and then we'll also include links to them in the uh, recording upload. Um, so you should have multiple avenues to be able to get a hold of those. Um, I do notice a question in there. First one that came in was, uh, where can we get the names um, of your cookbooks? I can put a link into chat here uh, in just a moment. 
Um, but uh, Andrea, if you would like to carry on and presenting some of these, um, feel free. Uh, Still so ask, where do you live? Oh, um, so I live in Kamikawamachi. It's um, in Saitama Prefecture on the edge of Guma. It's like um, northwest of Tokyo, an hour on the bullet train, maybe a couple hours by car. A semi-rural area. Anywhere, Grace? My only advice is get the best best vegetables you can get because they have the most flavor. Get them from the farmer if you can, farmer's market if you can, if you can't, you can't. That's no shame. Um, just do what you can always. And then the same thing with the condiments, um, the, the seasonings. Um, it's not like you're gonna use them so much and they really don't go bad. I mean, my soy sauce probably has been in the, you know, not this one, I just uh, opened all these today. Um, <clears throat> you know, they just get dark, soy sauce and miso just get darker um, as as uh, time goes along. But um, they're fermented products, so they're not gonna go bad. They might lose some lack, luster, you know, but, um, never throw away at the expiration date um in my mind um uh sherry asked how, how did you come to to live in japan and do you speak japanese well i've been here for 35 years so if i don't speak japanese i'm in trouble um it's a work in progress as always <laughs> andrew corrects me he's the only person in the whole world who corrects me my japanese um, we speak. We spoke um, English as a family. The boys spoke with their father in in Japanese, but and I do all my business or I do media, TV, things like that in Japanese. But you know, uh, I came to Japan thinking I'd come for a year. I had been. I went to Stanford, and then I was working in the bar and restaurant business in in uh, San Francisco, like eight years after college. Thought, okay, enough is enough. It's a lot of fun, but I'm ready to get serious about life. I was going to go to JD, go to, go to law school, because in those days, this is the 80s, that's what you did. I mean, people like me, and liberal arts grads. <laughs> um, and I was in love with sushi, so I thought, oh, and I also like foreign languages, uh, French, and Spanish, and some Italian. So I thought, oh, my next language will be Japanese, because I want to know what they're screaming about, the sushi bar I go to. And so I went to Japan to teach English for a year, and I was starting to apply for grad schools, and then realized, oh my God, I've just been here for I came in July and I was applying in like October-ish. I've only been here for a few months. I, 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 my head is not in the space to apply to uh, graduate school. So I'm going to get a JD slash master's in East Asian studies. So, and then in the meantime, I met my husband-to-be and got caught by the farmer boy. And um, that's, and we have three children. They're adults, 32, 28 is Andrew. Christopher's was 32. Matthew is... 26, he's in Brooklyn. Everybody, the other two are in Japan. Um, and there you go. Uh, Andrea asks, in, I am in the Pacific Northwest, where can I source the best Japanese condiments? Oh, um, actually health food stores. Um, by the way, the Japanese pantry is an online site. I'm a big online shopper uh, because I don't like to drive. Um, but in, in um, I would not go to the Japanese grocery stores, by the way, because um, in the past, um, the biggest Japanese grocery store will, will be remain nameless, did have um, Jap uh, Yamaki's miso and soy sauce for a short time, very forward thinking buyer, but typically they sell a lower grade of products, um, but I, it changes depending on the buyer. Um, health food stores or upper grade um, that um, I forget what the name of that uh, that higher grade um, supermarket you have in Portland um, I don't know so well about Washington I forget but um, oh Washington it's um oh, there's one on Bainbridge um, I forget the name of the of the market but higher grade supermarkets are online um, like Natural Import Company, um, Japanese Pantry, 
Amazon, you know, what can you do? Um, and just if you Google it, it'll come up. Uh, did you say Whole Foods or Health Foods? Oh, Health Foods. Whole Foods used to have uh, the Nama show you and some of the, but Whole Foods, I don't really go shopping so much in the US, but I mean, I do try for research purposes, but Whole Foods in my mind, and sorry if anybody's on working for Whole Foods, they do seem to start making their own proprietary brand fairly soon. So um, I don't know if they carry Nama Show You anymore. Sorry, um, the, the repackaged Yamaki one, um, which is available in many places. Uh, Clara asked, Uwaji Maya? Yes, um, what I said was in that, I do not want to bash Wajimaya, but I think their customers tend to be looking for more um, middle to lower grade products. But again, please don't get mad at me about this. Um, Eden is a good uh, brand for many um, of the Japanese products actually. Um, I don't use the mi mirin that they use, but it's a respectable mirin. It's called, uh, in Japan, it's Aji no Haha. Um, it's a, I used to use it, but um, it has, it's a little bit lighter profile than Mikao Mirin. And uh, the one point is that I use condiments that are like the soy sauce. These have a lot of power. So they're very powerful. And so they match. So if I put Ajinohaha, the even one in here, it's kind of, it, it can go, it can all match pretty well, but I feel like that the Mikao meaning has more power and it matches well with these powerful condiments. Is that it? And feel free to email me if you have any questions that you, Nancy Hachisu at me.com. Um, can't guarantee a long response, but, and I have a, a website too. You can find me, my um, Nancy Singleton Hachisu.com. Fantastic. Yeah. In, in addition to those uh, last couple of questions, I've also been interspersed with plenty of thanks and a lot of excitement to uh, try out these recipes. Okay. Uh, so Thank you yeah. for taking the time to uh, share all of that in the walkthroughs. Um, I think it was also uh, very helpful and engaging to hear a bit about kind of the the history and the use and and where some of these ingredients come from as well. So thank you very much for sharing that expertise. Um, thank you. And I just want to say that, and in, in fact, artisanal seasonings are going less and less. And so it is something that I put a lot of effort into um, education about because we really want to protect and 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 support these artisanal seasonings because the big makers will never go away because they're big makers and for sure they have a place in the whole spectrum. I'm not going to bash them at all. I really appreciate them and what they've done for introducing Japanese seasonings to the world. But the smaller makers that are towing the line, they're using only this soy sauce is the only soy sauce you will ever find, organic soy sauce you will ever find outside of Japan that's made with Japanese beans. Everything else is made from Chinese, Chinese organic beans. And so this is threatened into our soybean, organic soybean or soybean production in Japan is threatened. So that's why I advocate for these, um, these types of artisanal seasonings. Wonderful. That is a fantastic point. And I think a sentiment um, that rings in the hearts of uh, a lot of the folks in our communities around here. So uh, thank you very much for the work that you're doing and advocating for and uh, supporting their work as well. Um, we will go ahead and wrap up our presentation at this point. Uh, so thank you, uh, everyone, uh, for showing up this evening um, to uh, listen in Thanks. to uh, Nancy's presentation. Um, this will be the conclusion of our program for the evening. Do be sure to check the Snow Isle uh, website for more online events, including hazardous uh, weather of the Pacific Northwest with Ted Boehner on November 15th, and art and folk customs of Diwali with Deep T. Agrawal on November 16th. Have a great night, everyone. We hope to see you again soon.
Thank you.